Good morning, so my name is Alondra Del Rio, and I worked this year with Dr. Nee, and we looked at um, cognitive function in older adults and how it can be improved through computerized training. Okay, so we all have grandparents, or we all know an older adult in our life. So as we know, as we begin, as we begin to age, we begin to forget information faster than we used to, and it takes our brain longer to process information. This can be true, especially whenever we drive at night on the, whenever we drive on the road, especially at night. Um, it can become harder to distinguish objects in the darkness as, a, as we are driving, as we are passing the items on the road. So there are a couple of key terms that I wanted to review that we used in this study. One of them is contrast sensitivity. So contrast sensitivity was the ability to detect small changes in shading or pattern. And um, a real life scenario that I kind of wanted to talk about is in carpet. So if carpet has um, shading or patterns, it would be your ability to distinguish that there are stairs within the shading or within the pattern. Another one would be um, your ability to see a pedestrian on the road whenever they are walking at night in a poorly lit area. And here, as you can see on the screen, I have two separate squares. It would be your ability to distinguish that one of these squares is lighter than the other one. So um, contrast sensitivity is measured by threshold levels. So threshold level is the smallest amount of change required for somebody to notice that there is a difference between two objects. So back to the example for the pedestrian, how much light do you require to notice that there is somebody walking in the darkness on a poorly lit street? Or as you can see with these two squares, how similar can these two squares be for you to notice that they are still, that one of them is still dimmer than the other one? So our hypothesis for this study was that completing perceptual training for older adults could potentially reverse age-related deficits for older adults ages 60 and older who had normal or corrected to normal vision. So we wanted to, with the last part, we wanted to look at older adults that are relatively healthy and that have had deterioration, um, just normal deterioration due to age, not necessarily because of glaucoma or because of cataracts, but just because of the normal deterioration. Okay, so for our study, we used 35 participants. The participants were recruited uh, from assisted living facilities and from newspapers around the Wichita area. So each participant came in for five days for a total of one hour each day. They did the study with the lights off, so it was done in a dark room, and they were in front of a computer as they did their study. They also all got headphones so that they could get feedback whenever they answered a wrong answer. The headphones would let them know that they had gotten a wrong answer. This is the timeline of what their days looked like when they came in for the total of five days. So for day one, they had an eligibility screening. So this was just to make sure that they were able to participate and that we could use their information in the study. They also did a pretest on the first day. So for the pretest, they had, like I said, they had their headphones and they also used an eye patch so that we can measure each eye individually. This is the screens that would flash very rapidly for each participant on the computer. So as you can see, they had a reference point and they were doing the contrast sensitivity. So they would see the first screen with the grading, and then they had the comparison to the reference. These are potential screens that they could have seen, and they had to tell us whether the first screen was dimmer or if it was brighter than the second screen. Then they did, for day two to four, they would come in and they would do computer training. So the computer training, it was still kind of the same procedure. It was just a little bit different. So this is what their screens look like for day two to four. They had the reference, but then for the comparison to the reference, they had to be able to tell us whether the lines were more to the left or more to the right from the first one to the second one. 
So for day five, they had their post-test. The post-test was the exact same thing as a pre-test. They came in and they, they had to tell us whether the image was brighter or dimmer compared to the second one. Okay, so these are what the results showed. The results showed, as you can see, there was left and there was a right eye and there was pre and post test. Their threshold levels did go down and if you guys remember what I said, um, threshold levels is the smallest amount of change required for you to notice a difference. So as they went from pre-test to post-test, they required less of a change for them to notice that there was a change. Okay, so participants did show improvements in the contra and contrast detection as a result of the training. So the training was helpful for the participants. Um, some limitations that I did want to say, we did have a new room that was introduced halfway in the study. So we did kind of have some te technical difficulties as we did this part of the study. We also did this portion of the study in February, kind of in the winter time. So there was a lot of cancellations for some participants. So I think there could have been differences in scores between participants that came in for the five consecutive days compared to participants that had to cancel due to weather. Um, we also, for future research, we did want to look at driving performance for older adults and see if the effects from this study can transfer to driving and see if um, the older adult is able to detect changes faster as they are driving on the road. Here are my references. 